Uh, I, well, first, I I am a realtor, but I'm um, really more than anything kind of a military wife, dependent. Um, I grew up in the military, my husband also, so our passion is serving the soldier um, because I really feel like they kind of get left behind and they have to move. Mm -hmm. They're not moving by choice. So I really feel like a lot of times um, people okay. don't... One second, I just want to make sure. Oh, your mic is on. I'm sorry. It is. It's. The, I didn't see the green light, but it's in your shirt. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Sorry about that. I feel like people don't. Um, they've been discriminated against big time over the last couple of years because they don't have eighty thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars to put down over or um, in a VA loan. You don't have to put anything down. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's kind of my passion. I've been an agent since two thousand and six, um, and I feel like my boots on the ground experience are invaluable. <laughs> I, if you don't select us, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the name of your business? Is it just your name? It's the Walden team and we're with EXP. Um, Where can people I, find you? Um, the best part is probably Facebook. Um, Missy Stoddard Walden okay. is my personal page, which I love uh, more on the personal side because people get to see yeah. our world. Exactly. In, in a person, as a person. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's always good to get to know the face behind the business yes. and what they stand for and how we align with them. Yes. Um, what factors do you think are important um, for real estate agents to have when they're helping people buy and sell homes? Well, I think they're two different things. You can sell a home, and I can sell a home anywhere here where I'm licensed. Mm -hmm. But I think working with a buyer is huge. If you, when you work with a buyer, you have to know the coffee shops, you have to know the schools, you have to understand different um, different subdivisions, what they offer. You know, I just feel like I don't um, like to come here. I wouldn't come here to represent a buyer. I would find the best agent here in town for my folks, and I would refer. Because I just feel like that's so important to have yeah. the experience of living in the community. You know, I can sell a home. We're marketing people. We love marketing. Um, and that's kind of our passion for that. Okay. But, um, yeah, working with the buyers is a whole different ball of wax. All right. Good to know. Um, you said you love marketing. Are you incorporating any new technologies uh, oh to your God. systems? Yes. You see these bags under my eyes? Oh, stop. I got them too, girl. Because at night, I am just like, oh, my God, this is so cool. <laughs> you start scrolling and you see crazy. Oh, yes. So, of course, um, yeah. You know, using ChatGPT is huge. I hate when people just cut and paste it, though. You really yeah. have to put your own person in it. I agree. Um, I think it's an amazing opportunity for people that are not, they may be their English. Like my um, business partner is um, from Dominican Republic. He's very strong, obviously, but it's Spanish. Yes. Um, but So he uses a lot of ChatGPT. Just, I think it gets you over that hump. If you can't, Think and I'm like, oh, I'll just figure out that tomorrow. No, drop something in ChatGPT. Yep. Let them help you initiate your excitement for the subject. So that is huge. We I stood in a group um, in the morning. It's mastermind. It's an international mastermind. So it's kind of cool. I hear what everybody's doing all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I think we've gone back to relationships right now. Yeah, we all have this amazing database of 10,000 people. But how many of those people know you really yeah. and who I think we've all lost our communication art to sit and visit with somebody face to face you know emails you know everybody's oh, yeah. texting I just feel like going back to the basics and loving on our people that are in the database and just letting them know we care it's their birthday or their dog's birthday yeah. or the day we bought the um, house together or what they we helped them close on it I think that those going back to the basics is huge. I agree. I feel like we get lost in our instant gratification of texting and just DMing somebody yeah. or tweeting, whatever you want to call it. And people forget like face to face interaction, getting to know somebody, looking somebody in the eye, mm -hmm. shaking somebody's hand does get lost in all that craziness. But there are ups and downs to it. But we just got to find a way to navigate a way that's not so cold, you know, right. like what you said. I think you can't put all your eggs in one basket mm -hmm. either. You mm -hmm. know, if everybody's all Instagram, what happens if Instagram takes down all of your content, your host? Yeah. You know, so I think going back to the basics of just an email, we put out a missing moments email every week. Um, we pick a dog that needs to be um, brought home and mm -hmm. out of the shelter. And we try to do things that are not all real estate related. You know, it's like maybe who's having a beer fest or, mm -hmm. you know, just something that is very um, generic but yet community driven. Okay. And as far as the community driven 
events that you have for veterans. What do you like to What do you like to do? I think we have to educate. We have to educate. I feel like that's where my role is in life right now, you know, because we are here to mentor and to just really help everybody not fall into the same pitfalls that have been affected uh, our, our veteran families, our military families, year after year after year. There's mm -hmm. scams. You know, there's the big uh, lenders, the, the three big lenders for the military. Yeah. And they're all corporate. They're just corporate. They don't care about the human being part of it. Mm -hmm. You're a 1-800-dial-me-up, Monday through Friday, number. And you become, you're just a, a, a number, a commodity in their machine, and I hate it. So oh, I really yeah. feel like it's so important to educate the, um, the VA loan user so they understand all the cool things that they have. But they, you need to have a local lender that's in the community that is invested in the community, thus they're invested in you. And when you see them at Giant, they're not going to want to go hide behind the no. Cheerios. They're going to want to give you a hug yeah, because you're a part of the family. That, mm. As a military um, family, you don't have that. You have your squadron that you're a part of maybe, but because you move so many times, yeah. I feel like it's really hard to get and be a part of an actual local community. Yeah, I've had military wives tell me, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to make friends because we're just oh. going to leave. That's heartbreaking. I'm like, this are you so kidding me? Yes. Yeah, so I just feel like that's our thing. We really have to educate and bring them all together so okay. they can understand what they have together. Mm -hmm. So. And what kind of resources are you using to help educate people? Are you on social media? Are oh, you? Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me about the things that I'm you kind share. I'm the bad girl. Oh, why are you a bad girl? <laughs> share. Because I feel like people are they're not telling people the truth. You what know, do you like I did a short yesterday just on um, somebody called me and said, hey, hey, Mrs. Walden, we need a rent to own. Or I want to do a rent to own. I understand that I can pay a certain amount each month and that we can get locked into the sale price. And with the market always, really, our market's just going to continue to go up. Mm -hmm. So it's such a scam. It's a marketing tool for somebody to get someone to call them. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we really don't have any of those right now, but we have this. And even a lot of times rent to owns, they're drawn in, but the person's marketing it is not even the homeowner. Oh, they don't really own the home. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. just diverting, yeah. trying to say, "Hey, this house is on the market," when it really isn't. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. How did you find out about this? Like, how are you? Like, did, we did live you... it. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, we have people. I have people call and say, "Hey, I see that you have this house for rent," and what they've done is they've taken my for sale listing oh. and they've turned it into a rental listing and put it what? out there. I know it's bad. And then they tell people, it's like, hey, you know, you can't get into it right now. It's occupied for another two weeks. Go ahead and send us your $1,000 deposit money order to some weird address. So they go ahead and send their money to this, but yet the house will never be available for Oh them. my goodness, that's so it's just horrible. scammy, but those are things. And the people will call me, they keep my phone number on it. So they'll call me and they'll say, hey, I sent you my thousand bucks. You know, when do we get a chance to, when do we want us to do the lease or the application? No, oh my goodness, that's, that. I didn't even know that was a thing or going on. So I'm glad that people who are listening yes. look for some, what are some red flags when you come up with this stuff? Um, I think, well, for one thing, what I would do is just kind of double check to make sure the house isn't for on, on the market for sale. Also. Like look for it online, like on just, Google, I look mean, it up. Yeah, or just even the big Z, you know, we mm. won't be not fans. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think even the big Z does things to um, generate leads for the agents. You know, we pay basically for our own listings mm -hmm. to come back to us, you know, but they don't refer back to us. So a lot of times I think people uh, will defer to that as a resource, but third parties are not always reliable. They're not reliable. So call, I mean, the most important thing I really feel like people need to do is find a trusted local real estate agent, mm -hmm. a realtor that actually has experience. I think during COVID, mm -hmm. everybody got their license <laughs> because they had time to sit home and take their tests, okay. you know, and study up for it. So I always tease them like all the great bartenders in town have their real estate license. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they truly need to go back to making their great craft yes. cocktail. Yes. And, you know, the onesie, twosie ones, they kill us because they really don't know the profession. They don't know how to write a contract. Mm. I had a kid the other day. He sent me the home inspection. I said, okay, do you have the home inspection contingency? He goes, oh, 
I didn't know I had to do that. I've never had to, because oh. they never had to do that because you never got to negotiate mm. appraisals. You didn't get to negotiate home inspections. You didn't get to negotiate any contingencies oh, for your goodness. buyer over the last couple of years. So now it's coming full circle and you really mm. do have that opportunity. But if you don't know your trade mm -hmm. and you don't know your documents and you don't know how to keep everybody out of jail. Oh, man. <laughs> you ugly. Whew, you that's know? scary. So, <laughs> a lot of pressure there. I always say, I don't look good in orange. So <laughs> what do you need to do? Dulls me know? out a little bit. <laughs> not good in orange. No. <laughs> anyway. You look great in this uh, nice brown blazer here you got. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. Um, and then how important is it for you to establish and keep that relationship with your clients? It's huge. Tell and, you me. know, I'm so bad. Again, I kind of, like am the bad girl, I think, sometimes. You're not. I try to scarf up the people who, like if the we have the listing, we've, my sellers sell the house, I always try to take care of the buyers, too. Mm -hmm. So we try to get their information and put them in, a, put them in our database. Yeah. But I just think that, um, yeah, you have to stay. You know, and really, I just, we put a postcard out that says, are you an orphan? Because so many of the agents, almost 60% of the agents that, got their license over the last two years, have stepped away because they weren't making any money because mm -hmm. just like all your other guests said, we have no inventory. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have inventory and you can't sell can't a house, sell. Yeah. you can't even maybe make enough to pay your dues. So they've stepped away. So a lot of the purchasers over the last couple of years do not have representation anymore. Man. And you may just want somebody to paint, you know, paint your walls. Yeah. Who's a great plumber? Who's someone that maybe you has have that um, database of people that are great professionals to refer to. That's right, yeah. So you gotta keep up with those people. You gotta love on them. That's good to think about. That's something I, I don't think about with real estate agents. I feel like they're just so busy with like home stuff, but you gotta know the whole community from a plumber to a painter Absolutely. to a florist. Like they look for you for guidance, especially. We really wanna be, I want to be that person that is a referral. I'm a part of a 212 group, which is. What's a, that? It's 212 is a boiling point of water, right? You mm. can be 211 and you don't get anything, any action, mm. but at two. 212 you do and it's just a local community referral group mm -hmm. so we're vetted we know each other personally so there's an insurance person there's a you know investor guy there's an appraiser all these different people yeah. that we know personally that we can always refer and know that they're going to take good care of our folks yeah so that's great I love yeah. that. <laughs> and have you had any weird experiences with like s selling a home or a buyer asking you like, is this house haunted? Or can you tell me the history about this? Oh my gosh. Anything crazy? You I love it. We live in Fredericksburg, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. A lot of haunted stuff. <laughs> well, it's not so much that. You have to think like Culpepper, even you all, how many hens have been on that rail mm -hmm. and that the home that was built in 1886? Mm -hmm. How many boots have gone down the stairs? <laughs> yeah. I sold a home in Culpeper, and I every time I walked in, I just I knew I really wasn't by myself. Oh my goodness! It gives me goosebumps actually. Okay. So I would wish <laughs> to say, hey everybody, how's everybody going? You know, I mean, and you have to respect yes the core of the heart of a home that, that way mm -hmm. you know i just really feel like it's really super important for everybody to um yeah you have to be respectful, respectful. yeah and I agree. when you get that feeling when you walk in a home if you're not going to be happy there it's not going to change whoa so you just know don't you yeah I mean, when you walk, when you all bought your home didn't you know when you first walked in the door that this was probably the house not yet, but hopefully in the future. Okay. <laughs> but I just, I think that that's a big deal. Yeah. It truly is. So I'm hoping to feel that one. Day. You will. Thank you. Do it soon. Though. Okay. I just feel like nothing's going to get better. Oh, that's, that's what I keep sure. hearing. Yes. Knocking on some wood here. <laughs> and then who are you outside of work? What do you like to do? Oh my gosh. I really, really enjoy walking. I am a walker. I'm FXBG walkers is our hashtag. What's that? Um, just a Fredericksburg walker. Ah. And we have, I did the Camino. Do you know, have you heard of the Camino? No, I feel so like. Well, it's in Spain. Mm -hmm. So we started in Portugal and Whoa. a bunch of ladies that, um, one of, they needed, they needed a warm body. Somebody had dropped out. So I dropped in and one of the ladies I went to high school with, um, had invited me to do that. So we're all older. And I thought, I need two new knees probably down the road. Oh, and I thought, my. before I have to have my knee knees done, this is something I've always wanted to do. So anyway, we walked for seven days. You walked like 14 miles each day. You have a pack. Um, we did cheat a little bit. We had our... That's okay. We had a um, carrier. He took our suitcases from each spot. So each day... We started in a new location, and we walked all day long. We'd stop and have the first 
first day they wanted to, they went like 18 miles. I'm like, you guys, oh, oh girl, man. stop doing that. I'm done. <laughs> so I told them, I said, I'm going to stop at lunchtime. I'm going to take my shoes off. I'm going to change shoes and socks, have a glass of wine yeah. and a sandwich, and then we'll move on. And these three of them were um, marathoners. Mm. So they're that mentality. They're just going to put their head down and we're going to get there. Yep. Can we please look at the cows? <laughs> Can we check the houses Enjoy out? the moment. <laughs> you're going through villages. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was such it beautiful? an exceptional experience in my life. I'm wow. so glad I did it. And we met people from all over the world. Wow. A lot of single women. It was really interesting to me because you're walking in a foreign country with your pack. Yeah. You may not have a phone. Some people just wanted to totally be phone free. Off the grid. Which, not for me because I really want to take a lot of pictures yeah. and stuff. But a lot of people do that trek to center their heart again. Mm -hmm. You know, they may have had something bad happened in their life and they just needed to be by themselves. So, I mean, we met amazing people from all over the world. And one young lady, she saw my knee was killing me oh. like the third day and I was just sitting on a wall, just kind of taking some time. She goes, do you know about kinetic taping? And I'm like, I wow. should. I mean, I have 20 years in orthopedics, so I should know that. And I thought, I cannot believe my doctor forgot to tell me about it. <laughs> he gives me a stupid brace. Oh. I mean, a brace never stays in place. No. So when you're walking 14 miles each day. So anyway, she brought out, she pulled out this tape and she goes, this is what I taught my mom. I'm thinking, okay, is this a compliment or not? But no. I'll run with it. I'll oh. be the mom today. But she showed me how to tape on either side. We did a YouTube video and brought it up. So it was just amazing. And you could keep that tape on for three days. Okay. So this young lady, I saw her. We saw her each town. Every town we went to, the people that I was with, good Catholic. So they wanted to hurry up and get there for Mass. So we would go and we would attend Mass and everything. And you kind of run into the same people the whole okay. way through this trail. And then when we got to De Santiago... This is what made me really think about communicating. Here are all these people. Nobody knows each other other than they bonded over their trail walk. Yeah. And they're all hugging. This is a huge cathedral square. How many people space. would you estimate were there? I mean, thousands of people. Mm. You know, but they're all that you, the people you um, wrapped your arms around through the whole trek, everybody was coming up giving each other a hug. Oh. And I'm thinking, I wish our United States leadership could be here. <laughs> yeah. We can have Russia, we can have Spain, and everybody can Take eat note. and come and really physically talk to each other. Yeah. That's that amazing. A, yeah. If you get a chance to do it, you have to do I'll it. I'll have to. Is it like a, a global thing where like people just come? Everybody you don't have to be part of like no. anything. No. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that one day. It's very interesting. You, and, it's it, cool. And we stayed in a different Airbnb each night. How do you even plan that? Well, you go with somebody who does plan. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> and then when I came back early, we went to Rome afterwards, and I came back um, four days early yeah. and just went over. I had flown out of Norfolk, so I flew into Norfolk, and then we have a condo over at Cape Charles, mm -hmm. and I just, like, slept for two days. My neighbors are like, hey, girl, are you okay? Hey, girl, are you okay? And they're like, we saw you come in on Friday. Are you? It's Sunday. Are you okay? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I didn't really know where I was because we'd slept in a different bed every night. <laughs> and I'm like, they're like, you want to go to happy hour? I'm like, give me 15 minutes. I'll be ready. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an amazing experience. Yeah, it sounds Absolutely. like a good time. Yeah. A lot of friendliness sounds yes. like. Yes. I love that for you. International friendliness. Okay. What a concept. Yeah, I can't even think about like who all is going to be there and if they're going to be nice to me. But it sounds like it was, they were everybody nice. Everybody knew why you were there. You knew why you were there. Everybody had a different mission mm -hmm. for their walk. Yeah. Did you have a mission that you would want to share? Or? I think I just really wanted to do it. It's still one of those things you just have to do before you can't. Mm, that's and right. You know, and you said you have at knees. At this stage yeah. of my life, I mean, there's so many things. It's like, I, you know, there's things that you just have to accomplish before you can't. Yes. And I think, like, I see that with older folks. They wait too long. You know, they're in their lives, they wait too long before they... Maybe they need to downsize, but they're not downsizing, mm -hmm. and it's just overwhelming for them. So I think the same lesson learned, you know, just plan a little bit ahead. Yeah. And, I mean, I had one family that the mom had Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and she was walking, wandering the streets, you oh. know, and Pop would have to bring her back. And then um, it just got out of control, so they decided to, she went ahead and they put her in assisted living and all Pops wanted to do was be with her. Oh. So the house was a mess. I mean, it needed a lot. So I was able 
to play matchmaker with a Marine Corps family that was moving here from Okinawa. Mm -hmm. oh. And they had, I had sold their house. And I'm like, you guys, this is a great deal. You're going to get a mess. Be ready. Um, but I knew that they could make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, they bought a house sight unseen. Yeah. And they are in it now. And Miss Laura has totally gutted that whole house. It's absolutely gorgeous. But at the end of all this, when everybody was out of the house, I was left with the dog. Oh. I had Buster, because Buster could not go to mm. assisted living. Yeah. And I was like, are you kidding me? People have no clue. Some of the some of the loose ends that we end up tying yeah. up. Yeah. So we had to find a home for Buster. Oh, my god. So, I mean, it really just, it tore me up. It was one of the hardest transactions that I've ever Darn. done. Darn. Sounds like you get, like, really attached to some of these people and their yeah. stories, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah, well, the story, it's not just a soul sign. No. You know, the house is a story. The home is a story. The family is a story. When you sell a house and they've got all their, everybody's height, you know, for oh, 1975, yeah. 1980, you know, the kids, and it's on the inside. What do you do? You know, can you even paint over Yeah, that? I don't want to paint over this. No, so I have people that cut it out and they put in a new molding, but they took that with them. So. Oh, thank goodness. I was going to say I thought they threw it out, but no, no they took it with, took okay, okay. So, yeah, oh. a home is a story. Every Absolutely. Home, so... How are you keeping up with the latest trends and developments in the real estate market as far as, like, what houses people are looking for? Wow. There are no houses. Well. <laughs> no, I think I, I think people right now, I, it's really funny because at the gym this morning, I heard this discussion going on, and this one kid is like, I'm not going to afford, I'm not going to buy an old crappy house. Well, really? Do you want to start out in the house your mother and father worked 30 years to have? No, mm -hmm. you have to be realistic. So really at this point, I think if there's something that comes on the market that is in the location that's going to work for you, um, it may need a lot. Mm -hmm. But you know what? you got to start somewhere. You have to start humbly. You yes. can't start all at that the top. more yeah. because that's not how your parents got there. Mm -hmm. So just, just settle. You have to settle. Make the house your own. Just make sure that the big dime things are in good working order. Your HVAC system. In our area, we have well and septic. Um, so septic is a huge expense also. Mm -hmm. But just make sure you have that local boots on the ground experienced agent that knows, you know, how to get you through these things that are going to be costly. Yeah. Um, and maybe be able to negotiate a little bit for that. But you just can't start at the top, people. No. You're going to have to settle and get... Get grandma's old brick rambler. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> Make it beautiful. Make it yours. And then stay there for five or six years. Mm -hmm. And then you can sell it maybe or keep it as an investment. That's a good tip actually because a lot of times I think even in my head I would be like, I want to get like the newest, nicest, yeah. best thing I can get. Yeah. But it's like, no, be realistic. Well, and new construction is a really great deal. Mm. I think right now in our area, new construction is probably a really good investment because they are working to make it more affordable loan-wise. Yeah. Plus, you get the new roof and you get the new HVAC system and things like that. Whereas you're paying top dollar for a resale, check out new construction. True. But make sure and take a realtor with you mm -hmm. because the chick behind the desk at the model is representing the builder. Mm -hmm. And yes, they want you to be happy. They're going to give you a kudo bar and a soda, but that's not really representing you. Mm -hmm. So you do have to take representation. Okay, noted. Because <laughs> you would think, I'm just going to ask the front desk girl, but no. Mm -hmm. I always, I feel like I always see the best in people. I'm like, not that they have ill intention toward me, but you know, again, they're representing the person who's selling it. Yes. So. Oh, and that's another big deal right now. Mm. Everybody's going to the person who's a listing agent. Hello? You think that listing agent is going to represent you as fairly as they're going to represent no. their seller? Honestly, no. <laughs> and if somebody does dual, it's called dual representation mm. when you do that, you're walking a fine line. Again, mm. I don't look good in orange. I think it's a huge, <laughs> it's a huge conflict of interest mm. to do dual representation. Wow. But I do feel like it's coming down the road. Oh. Because buyer, buyer commission is in question big time. Oh, my goodness. So I think people are going to forego having a buyer agency mm -hmm. represent them and probably go straight to the listing agent. Mm. Well, something to think about for down the line, huh? It's scary. Yeah. It is scary. Um, what advice would you give to first-time buyers um, as far as looking for a great deal or what's the best price that they can get? Yeah, there's no great deal. Darn. There's well, no great deal. I do feel like... Again, just going back to the representation, you have to have someone who has your that is strong enough to advocate for you, 
that has a knowledge level to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and not just throw baby under the bus. Mm -hmm. Because right now that's all, it's financial. Everybody's like throwing as much money at the deal as possible, but it's not always the money. A lot of times it's the terms of the contract. Mm -hmm. And he, I, as I understand it too, people who bought at the peak of the market the last two years, a lot of them felt like they had not been represented properly. But yet, they had FOMO. They had to have it. They wanted to win the deal. So they were bringing money even over the appraised value, mm. foregoing the home inspections, foregoing any contingency that they might would have in order to win. But if any of you all are out there and you want to sell, you have enough equity to sell, but be smart about it the second time around for mm. sure. Okay. So There's that tip for you all. Yeah. Listen up. <laughs> Better listen. <laughs> Uh, it's an educational experience for sure, and you don't want to have a negative experience. Yeah, no, all possible. definitely not. That would be, I don't know, especially for first time buyers. I feel like once you have a negative experience, you're gonna be next time you do that, you're gonna feel very like, you know, it's just sad. It really is, and everybody's like, well, first time home buyers, are there? Is there a first time home loan? Is there, you know? And there really isn't. And again, just be smart. Whoever it is that is gonna represent you, you can ask them to please print out their MLS production mm -hmm. so you can see have they even sold a house mm. they may be the cutest kid on the block on tiktok you know and they may be able to fake it but it's all about the experience mm. anybody can pass the crazy test it's really sad i feel like that the bar of entry into the world of real estate yeah. is so low mm. and it's just a lot of people should not be representing people because they're all about the commission when the real estate agent needs a commission more than you need the house, yeah, it's gonna go bad. Oh man, why do you think it's that easy? Like I don't know much about like the real estate industry in that sense where like to take these tests. It's I not that easy, I'm just saying the bar but of entry. It's like, I really feel like they should make everybody, because we're independent contractors, mm -hmm. you're gonna own your own business. Mm -hmm. You should have, maybe have to pay $10,000. It's like buying a franchise. Mm. You have to be invested as a professional and know your stuff. Yeah. So maybe if you invest financially, you'll get educated, so you will be able to grow your own business. Mm -hmm. So Dang. Something to think about. So just because they have a TikTok doesn't mean that they know everything. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the credentials, the MLS, make sure everything's legit. Yep. Okay. Yep, absolutely. And then um, what do you think are three qualities that people should look for in a real estate agent when they're... Um, tall and blonde. Oh, come on now. <laughs> uh, no, I think communication is huge. Yeah. Um, we do automatically ask, how do you want to communicate? Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think your um, production, it's not the team's production. It's what your, what is your production? How many people have you closed? And then ask for personal references. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Google has been pretty interesting to watch everybody's referrals or recommendations. If this person doesn't have a Google account, mm -hmm. it's kind of scary. Oh. <laughs> you know, or like we have uh, a lot on Zillow. We have tons of recommendations on Zillow. Mm -hmm. But ask to maybe reach out to someone that they have service and just see. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But as far as like character traits or anything like that. Oh, they have to be compassionate. And they have to listen. And I think um, myself, I really try to put my feet in their boots, mm -hmm. in their shoes, and just see, and remember, I mean, hello for us, it's been, you know, a bazillion years back before that was our first purchase, our first home purchase, yeah. but you have to, again, the agent can't be hungrier for their commission, mm -hmm. then you need the house, mm -hmm. and that I really feel like that should be something that comes across, They'll, you'll know, that you can tell when people have commission breath. <laughs> I love these little do words they you have say. Commission breath, or are they really invested in you? Mm. Do they understand? And we send a questionnaire right off the bat. I send a questionnaire just so I can really understand. Try. I want them to talk to each other. A lot of times, the husband and the wife, mm. they're not on the same no. path. <laughs> you know, the woman, the wife is like, "Oh, I'm happy with a townhouse. We just need to have a little yard out back to let the dog out." Husband's like, "Man, we want five acres." <laughs> I'm like, "Y'all need to talk to each other." Yeah. <laughs> So That's, having that questionnaire for yeah. both of them to answer really helps them center themselves again, too. And you have to be able, once I have the basic questionnaire, I have that time that I can sit and discuss with them. You know, really, you guys, this is what's on the market. Mm -hmm. What do you really want? Okay. 
you know. So. That's that's a good point though, because how awkward is it when you are like coming in and they're like, I want this. No, but I want this. And it's just right. like, oh, this is awkward. Who's, you don't want to pick a side and then have them feel alienated. Yeah. And I think a lot of agents, um, you know, you, you, you're, we have lead generation that comes to us and you get the call and you like run and gun. It's like, oh my God, I got to go show this house. No, you don't. <laughs> Ask some questions first, mm -hmm. you know, and even in this market, even though it says that the listing is active, they may already be working two or three offers. Mm -hmm. So why would you go and show that house? So again, go send a communication. You have to call the listing agent and say, hey, you know, you've been on the market for an hour. Do you have any contracts already? And a lot of times, you know, a year or two ago, and they were like, oh, absolutely. We've already <laughs> had, you know, 15 showings in the first 15 yes. minutes. So it's really, you have to ask the agent. You have to communicate with the agent on the other side. And I think your peer reputation, how you play in the sandbox, mm -hmm. will win you a deal or mm -hmm. lose you a deal. Dang. If you're a poopy person, who wants to do business with no, you? No, not anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. It just takes the fun out of it. Yeah. If everybody's so damn serious and so, you know, oh, I have to beat my cat. It's all about me. Well, no, it's not. No. We all have the same mission. We all want to get to the same end goal and it's for our clients yeah exactly so plus yeah. it'll make you feel good too not being a poopy person oh but some <laughs> people don't realize they're poopy people well oh. realitycheckedtime.com so you have to tell them <laughs> i think so too your poops we're not good. we're not doing poopy here the bathroom's over there <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's right. So. and then um just to wrap things up here if you could leave us with one message for our listeners what would that be it could be in regards to the world family veterans life in general I, I'm just going to kind of leave it with the veteran in mind also because I do feel like that's the the biggest misconception um, for the vet who is putting down zero. You know, when you do a VA loan, you really don't have to put down 3.5%. You don't have to put down anything. You can put down zero. Mm -hmm. But think about that vet who has served, maybe taken a bullet for you, maybe has PTSD, maybe has something for our freedom. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why he has this opportunity yeah. to use that VA loan. And the other thing, you may get somebody who's putting down 100000 but they've emptied out their TSP, they've emptied out their savings account, and what happens if something goes bad in their life? Are wow. they going to be able to afford their mortgage? Because they don't have a backup plan. No. My military folks have guaranteed job. They're not going to lose their position unless they really mess up bad. Mm -hmm. They usually are very um, astute financially. They really are trying to you know, save some money and make sure that they have a backup plan because they never know when they're going to be transferred either. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing with a VA appraisal is the biggest bump in the road, um, especially for the Northern Virginia agents. And I don't mean to throw you all under the bus. No, no, but throw us. I'll tell you what, Northern Virginia agents have been very discriminatory towards our VA buyers. Oh. Well, you know, we're not so sure if the appraisal's going to come in. And, you know, there may be some things on the appraisal that my client doesn't want to fix because you do get, they're called lender required repairs. So no matter what kind of loan it is, there may be lender required repairs that pop up that the appraiser calls out, not the home inspector, that mm -hmm. the appraiser calls out. Well, then it's negotiable who takes care of them. But the VA loan is the only loan, they have something called the Tidewater Act. Mm -hmm. So if the loan actually comes in below contract value, mm -hmm. or if the appraisal comes in below contract value, you can challenge it. You can't challenge a, a conventional or an FHA appraisal, but on the VA, you can certainly. And if you have priced that house properly and you understand the comps that, that the appraiser is going to use, mm -hmm. then you should have no issues with challenging it if it comes in low. So it's all about pricing the house properly. Mm -hmm. But for my vets, I want to reach out to all of you all, anybody that's here that's listening to us, please give that person who served this country for your freedom the opportunity to be a homeowner also. It's huge. Thank you for being an advocate for them. We appreciate that. I think you're well, maybe the first one to like advocate for them and, and bring awareness. So thank you for that. We like to have all kinds of perspectives and different topics. So we appreciate that. I think discrimination, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, you have to look at it um, not myopically. You have to open your eyes and your brains and your feet to be in someone else's shoes. And I really feel like there's there was a tremendous amount of discrimination over the last two years um, for our VA buyers. Mm -hmm. Well. So wake up, people. Yeah, wake it up. <laughs> <laughs>